Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Dr. Glenn Vo, and thank you so much for tuning in. We have this special series. It's called the Clinical uh, Springback Series, and the reason why we're doing it is I have so many, so many students reach out to me, so many new grads reach out to me, and they're telling me what's going on as far as their training goes. And, and you know, there's a lot of them that just got graduate that just graduated, and I ask them, I'm like, well, how are you handling the clinic? And they're like, well, Dr. Vo, we're just doing online modules. I'm like, online modules, and so. And, and, you know, it's because of what's going on right now. And so I reached out to my friends at Ultra Dead and they came and they said, look, we got just the person. They, <laughs> we got just the person who she's a great educator, great dentist, and she would be perfect. And so here we are, Dr. Susan McMahon. Susan, what's up? Hello. So nice to be with you today, Glenn. Oh, nice. Man, I am so I'm excited. excited. And when I, when I got the when I got the introduction and when I found out what you were doing, uh, I knew that you were going to be one of the right people to help out these new grads. And, and you were quick to tell me, look, what I'm going to show today, Glenn, is not just for new grads. It can really help out dentists who've been practicing for quite some time. And hey, it's going to help me out too. So I'm super excited about this. But for those who don't know who you are, Susan, do me a favor, just kind of briefly, just talk about, uh, you, you know, your, uh, your, your practice, what you do in, in, in your practice, how long you've been practicing for, where you're, where you're located, and as far as like just educating other dentists, what's your background in there? Sure, sure. So I, uh, I practice in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I've been in practice more years than I really want to admit here on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> but um, just to give you an idea, I had um, my son when I was in dental school and now, now um, he's grown and working and um, working from home from my house these days. But anyway, I, um, I am AACD accredited, which means I've gone through a process where I have really fine tuned skills in cosmetics. It's yeah. a peer review situation, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. And it really defined my practice for me. It's what made me the dentist I am today. You start photographing all your work, you're super, um, you're into self-evaluation, and you're getting evaluation from your peers. Um, so I feel like it's really made me a good dentist. It also launched my speaking career. So I practice in Pittsburgh, um, and I've had a number of practice situations. I was an associate when I graduated from school in an amalgam practice. Then I opened my own practice and did what a lot of people do, like um, PPOs and practiced and you know was all, in all the insurance plans. Then I went through a, um, a issue in my personal life and actually sold my practice to a DSO, not having any idea what a DSO was. Yeah. And um, then that uh, wasn't ideal practice for me. We sort of had philosophical differences mm -hmm. in our patient care. And I left that and opened my own practice again. So I'm back in full-time private practice. I work in Pittsburgh. I also fly to Chicago and work there a couple of times a month or have for about five years with some friends that are in my speaking group in the Catapult group. And um, I have a small sort of concierge fee-for-service practice now. And well, I left her. So I'm out, I'm out and about twice a month or so speaking to the other dentists, which I love. Well, I'm so, so excited to have you. And, and just for that, just brief bio that you just gave, uh, you know, for, for those younger dentists that are tuning in right now, um, what, a, what a great person to talk to as you're navigating this industry, right? I mean, Susan, you've been, you've been pretty much through everything you can think of. And now you could say being quarantined in your house because, man, what's going on with you guys up in Pennsylvania? I mean, there's so many, all those restrictions there, but, but what a wealth of knowledge there. But, you know, today um, we're going to bring you in. You're going to talk about some composites, right? And, and yeah. I think I will say this, most of us have this kind of love-hate relationship with composites. And a lot of times people just want to go straight to like, uh, like a crown and bridge solution, right? They're like, just to heck with it, you know, because it's like, I can't get the, the ideal cosmetics. I just want to go straight to crown and bridge here. And I love what you're doing because there, there's, there's a way to make composites look really nice too. And uh, I will tell you that I have friends who are in the same organization and I told her, I want to get accredited too. And they're like, okay, yeah, just go to the website. I have a lot of respect for you guys because that's I'm trying to work towards that. And that's a lot of documentation. You're not giving that accreditation just freely. You're not, they're not like, here you go. Thanks for paying. No, you have to earn it. That's another Facebook Live that we're going to bring you on as far as that goes. <laughs> but Susan, I'm going to turn things one. over to you now. I know you said you have some slides to share. So I'm going to let you uh, slide. Uh, go ahead and take over. And guys, if you have any questions, what I'm doing is I'm watching the comments 
And if you have any questions, just type it there and I'll let uh, Dr. McMahon know and, uh, and she'll answer those questions. So yeah, Susan, I'm gonna let you, yeah, I'll, well, let you welcome. I'll let you go ahead and, uh, and, and take over here. Okay, thank you, Glenn. Um, yeah, welcome to the profession. I, like, like I said, I've been through every possible practice situation. So connect with me on Facebook. I'm happy to answer your questions about yeah. those kind of things too. So let me just jump in and share my screen. We're gonna talk about composites today and um, anterior composites specifically. Let's just do this. Yeah, little share button on the bottom. All right. Yeah. All right, um, anterior composites specifically. So um, in the last 10 years or so, there has been a huge increase in the number of young people seeking cosmetic dentistry. And um, the numbers are like tenfold over. And I think as younger practitioners, you're gonna see so much of this. And I wanna advocate, and I think so many of us are out there advocating really conservative cosmetics. And a lot of times that means composite. And if you're able to do composite well, I, your practice will soar and um, you'll get referrals and you'll, you'll be really satisfied. You'll be happy with your work. And that's really important. So if we take a look at the case like this, and I'm just gonna zip through a few slides cause I couldn't do this just talking. I had to show you some pictures. Um, if we look at a case like this, there is a composite on tooth number nine, her left central incisor. And you can tell it's composite. It doesn't take a dentist to tell it's composite. It doesn't look great. It's, uh, it's lost its sheen. The form's not quite right, but I see this all the time. And this composite was only about a year and a half old. So she had a class four, um, a class four fracture. Somebody put some composite on it, she wasn't happy with the way it looks. And I just wanna take a quick look at why it doesn't look the way we want it to. When we look at the line angles here, she basically has a flat plane of composite. The color is not bad, right? It doesn't look too bad. It's not translucent, you can't see the line, but the outside form, the anatomy is not quite right. If we look at the anatomy of a central incisor, we're gonna see several things, right? And the two big things that that are always lacking for me in composite restorations are line angles. And that is the transition from the facial plane to the interproximal plane. That is a corner. Um, and oftentimes when we're finishing with discs that many of us are taught to, and I know they're still teaching a lot of this in the dental schools and cups, that line gets obliterated. It gets flattened out. So there's no more corner. It should be a corner with a little bit of a rounded angle to it. And the second thing we sort of lose when we're doing anterior composites are the lobes. And every anterior tooth has facial lobes. Some are more pronounced than others, and it just depends on the anatomy of the teeth. So we're gonna look at how to make those line angles right and how to finish those lobes and get them to look the way they're supposed to. And to do it in 10 minutes. This is a really practical way to finish composite. So I'm not talking about spending two and a half hours doing a beautiful class four composite. And there are people that I so admire that can do it like, um, so it's a work of art. This is going to be a beautiful restoration, but it's gonna happen in the 30, 45 minutes that you have to do a typical class four restoration, especially if you're an insurance participating situation. All right, so if we look at this, her natural tooth, and you can always base it on the natural tooth next door or one in her arch somewhere. You can see the line angle really well on that, but you see that it is not on the restoration, totally lost on that restoration. So that's reflecting light the wrong way for our eyes, and it makes it look like dentistry and not even great looking dentistry, right? So totally flat and obliterated out. The second thing I wanna look at is surface texture. And um, oftentimes when we're polishing with cups and discs, we completely blow the surface texture. And we're also taught to polish so we have a perfectly flat plane with a high sheen. And um, that is just not what's reflected in nature, certainly not in natural anatomy. So if we look at this tooth on the left and take a look at its surface texture, there are lines um, that transverse across the cervical area and they're in the enamel and it's sort of rough up there. We can see the lobes pretty clearly and this tooth has really heavy lobes on it. And we can also see on the rest of the surface of this natural enamel that there's a little bit of roughness to it. A little bit of lines, a little bit of like almost gauzy roughness, right? And how do we accomplish that? How do you make that happen? 
This other tooth, I like this one a lot because it's really heavily striated with lines. You can see, you can really see those with your eyes, especially close up. So we wanna know how to make that too. And it all happens the same way. So I'm gonna take that first case and um, just kind of put the composite on it quickly and we're gonna get right to finishing. So here it is without the composite on it. I've used a little stent. I'm gonna just use two shades of composite to do this. I'm gonna use a translucent white, so a white enamel on the lingual. I'm gonna build out the, the incisal edge. Then I'm gonna use a body shade, an A2, to kind of um, get the rest of the body on there. And you see I'm, I'm making the lobes of the dentin with this A2. And then on top of that, a little bit more of the white enamel, um, another translucent shade. And then we're gonna get to the good part. How do we make this look like the tooth next door? If we were to simply take discs and cups and polish it off, we would end up with a flat tooth, possibly blow those line angles, right? No texture. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disc the line angles. And then this is where things get a little different. Um, I learned this technique in Italy about five years ago and have kind of ad adapted it to what we have here. So we're gonna use, um, and I've gone there three times to train on it to just to really, really um, learn how to do it really well and, and do some other things. They're, they're, they're really master finishers and master artists when it comes to composite. So we're gonna use a coarse diamond and we're gonna use a dry and then we're gonna do it very, very slowly. Then we're gonna do two spiral polishers and maybe some diamond paste. So here we are, first thing, I'm going to take a disc and I'm just gonna very lightly, interproximally on either side, get the corner. So it has to be done with the disc in order for that to work. Then I'm gonna take a coarse diamond and this seems so, so counterintuitive, I know, because it feels like you want the smoothest thing possible on your composite, but this is what works. So a coarse diamond and you, you cut with it dry and you do it very slowly. So if you have electric hand pieces, you put your friction grip coarse diamond in your electric hand piece and you spin it at about 20,000 RPMs. So really low as opposed to 200,000 when you're cutting. So about 20,000 RPMs. If you don't have an electric hand piece, you can take a coarse diamond and you buy one of these little guys and I'll, I'll get the link to this if you are interested, Glenn. It is an adapter that allows any, where am I? Any coarse diamond to become a friction grip and you can put it in a slow speed. Um, so you can then take your friction grip diamond and put it in your slow speed and it'll spin really slowly. And what we're gonna do is um, prep, finish the entire surface of this restoration, this composite. And we're also going to put the lobes in this and sort of finesse out the anatomy. So I have a little video, let's see how this goes. First thing I'm gonna do is go over the whole surface of the anatomy and then you're gonna see me push the lobes in either side. And then I'm gonna flip that burr over and I'm gonna go back and forth across the cervical to get those lines that we talked about. So we're gonna go back and forth over the whole surface. I'm putting the lobes in and then back and forth over the whole surface and flip it back and forth, 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 back and forth a bunch of times. You wanna watch that video again? So first the lobes. Then the whole surface. And then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you have to do that a lot of times. And Susan, okay. we have a question from the, the uh, someone just messaged me and they wanted to make sure that while you were doing that, that you were not using any water. Is that correct? That's correct. The coarse diamond is dry, no water at all. And then they, and they said this, they asked that that was a follow-up question was, is that a coarse diamond? As I like, guess you, you, they must've just jumped in there, but um, why are you using a coarse diamond? Because let me show you what it can do. Okay. A coarse diamond has enough um, grit to it that it will put the surface texture in the composite. So you're putting the surface texture in the composite and building the lobes and then you polish, you take um, polishers and I love these spiral polishers because they get in all the nooks and crannies and they don't flatten out, they don't flatten out the um, anatomy that you just put in and they also don't take away all the surface texture. So first we're going to use that coarse diamond dry spun slowly. So you can't put this in your high speed and just 
um, try to finish with it. It has to spin really slowly to get the texture. So you either use an electric, spin it really low, or adapt it to your slow speed. Those are your options. Um, and then we're gonna use a pinwheel shaped composite polisher. And th this one is Jiffy's Universal from Ultradent. And they're, they're my absolute favorites. And um, we're gonna take it across the surface a couple of times, really just a couple of times. And I have a video in a minute. And then we take the fine polisher across the surface a couple of times too. And depending on your composite, you may or may need not, not need diamond paste afterward. There's a couple of composites like mosaic. I don't even need the diamond paste. It polishes so high. And this is what it looks like. So composite, disking for the line angles, coarse diamond, two, two polishers. All of that is less than 10 minutes. And this is the natural tooth next door. And you see how it has that surface texture on it, has all those sort of lines, and you're able to mimic that in composite. So the polishers will composite, they'll polish the surface, but because you use that coarse diamond and because you spun it slow, it will still leave some of that surface texture in there. And um, so that's immediately pre-op. And here she is um, about, you know, this is her post-op appointment three weeks later. So you can see how it still leaves all of those little um, cross, cross lines in it. And the, reflect, the light reflects off your composite the same way it does off your natural teeth. And you also see how it builds out those line angles. So if you wanna hide a composite and you want a composite that nobody can see and you know do composite like, like a rock star would, then you need to finish like this, right? And here's the, here's the setup. So a coarse diamond, two finishers from um, spiral finishers and maybe a Jiffy brush with diamond paste on it. And then here's, a, here's where I get my adapters. I order them from eBay. They cost $12 for 10 adapters. It takes forever to get here, but they always come. So if they're really inexpensive and you can put any, any burr in there because you'll use the same technique on posterior restorations. But instead of using kind of a modified flame like this, you can use a um, round burr back there and, and polish composites in the posterior the exact same way and get teeth that absolutely disappear. So can I, I'm gonna zip through one more case. Glenn, and then oh yeah, of course. Uh, and you know, it, it's uh, you already. Uh, I, I guess you already predicted what questions are going to be asked because I had someone message me and they're like, "Where does she? What? What are? What is she using for that case?" And so, uh, yeah, she, uh, Dr. McMahon uh, briefly went over that, but I'll also get with her and we'll get like a little shopping list and we'll put it in the comments section later on. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, so let's do it. No, this is amazing yeah. stuff. I'll, 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 I'll keep my mouth shut here and let you keep going here. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so another case, this one just happened. This was, this lady was just in my office last week. So, you know, I've been, we're only going back to work here in Pennsylvania tomorrow, or um, we're allowed to go today, but I'm going back on Monday. So I've only seen a few emergencies over the last eight weeks. And I saw this lady last week. She, you see her lower lip. She, um, she actually fell and um, had a nice gash in her lower lip and has some sutures in that, but fractured that front tooth. So, you know, this is a typical emergency patient that comes into all of our offices and you want to be able to fix this in a beautiful way and um, send, send her home that day. I mean, you're, you're a, you're a, you, you are just a hero, a dental hero when you can do that for somebody, right? And um, just a quick look at her case. When we look at her central incisors, you can see that her number eight looks brighter than number nine, right? Um, but number nine matches all of her other teeth. So she's a little bit of brightness in that. And that's just something I talk to her about before I start restoring this tooth, because I'm gonna restore it to match her other teeth and to match the way this one was. And number eight's always gonna have that little bit of brightness. Um, so she's got a fracture, you know, you can see underneath there, it's fractured up the lingual pretty well. And we take a PA and see that it's nowhere near the nerve. So we know I can, I know I can restore that and her root looks intact. And we have a CT machine in our office too. And if I was suspecting a root fracture, I would have taken a CT scan, but I, I didn't need to do that for her. And you look at tooth number nine next or number eight next door. So the right central incisor, 
And you can see that the whole nerve chamber is obliterated, right? It's completely calcified down. And that's why it has that whitey opaquey look. So I showed that to her too and explained it to her. And if she ever wants to do something about that, then maybe we'll do veneers. But I think I could do a beautiful composite restoration for her right now and um, make it look great and send her home a happy camper. Um, so I'm going to skip through the composite part and just get right to the finishing because that's kind of what we're focused on today. But I want you to take a little bit of note of her other central incisor. So that one looks completely different than the one we just restored, right? It has really deep lines horizontally all through the facial surface, really strong line angles, and the lobes are not nearly as deep, right? So and we look at it this way, you can see the same thing. You can really see that surface texture in there. We wanna match that. So it looks the way her other, so her restored tooth looks like her original tooth. So I've got the composite on it. I did it the same way. I used just two colors of composite, a translucent and a body shade, and I'm ready to start to finish this tooth. So I've got kind of a basic shape going. And these videos I shot with my new microscope, so they're not perfectly in focus, but Glenn, next time I'll, I'll figure out how to do that, make it perfectly in focus, but you can see. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take that disc and just very lightly get, the, get those line angles. So I gotta create corners with that. That side, and then we're gonna flip it around and do the other side, same thing. And Susan, we have a question from one of the students in our group. I actually know this student really well. He wanted to know when, uh, again, if you can explain, when was the appropriate time to use the disc? And I, I saw that you, you started when we were talking about the corner and whatnot, but uh, is that the only time or when did you use the disc during, uh, the only during time this I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the only time I use the disc is to okay. get the line angles. So we're going to use the disc. For, we're going to put the basic shape of the composite in. We're going to use the disc first and get those two line angles. We're going to take off any excess and make sure we have a corner there. So and then we have the another disc. question here. This might be jumping ahead a little bit. Um, so uh, Dr. Dar is wondering if you, when you put the composite in, do you, are you wrapping it um, over the incisal to the palatal side? The lingual side. So we're going to, you, with the composite, you, so this patient comes in, you assess whether this tooth is, uh, needs endodontic care or is restorable. Neither of those, it is restorable, did need endodontic care. And then I am going to, then we talk to her about fees. I tell her, I think I can restore this with composite. I tell her her tooth next door is a little bit brighter, but she knows that. And she wants to just restore it with composite, not do veneers, anything like that. We talk about fees. We actually get her to pay right then and there. And um, before we start work, because afterward, we just want him to go home happy. So we take care of all of that. Then we anesthetize her a little bit. Then I beveled a little bit around that fracture. I actually put a decently long bevel on the facial of that and just cleaned up the lingual. And you know, it was fractured up the lingual. So then we start with translucent composite on the lingual side. So I build a little lingual shelf of translucent white composite. Um, and then on top of that let lingual shelf, so it, it's almost like you have the lingual enamel back. Then you put the dentin in with a body shade, and that's an A2 in this case, and then cure it, and then put more translucent white enamel on top. It's a sandwich of the tr translucent white enamel with A2 in between, okay? That's where we are there. And then I use the disc, to do either side, we put the line angles in with the disc. The next step, so that it's very little disking, it takes maybe a minute tops, we're disking just mesial and lingual, um, mesial and distal to get the corners. Then you take that coarse diamond again, and we're going to get the whole rest of the anatomy in just a minute or two. So I'm gonna take that coarse diamond and go over all the composite, and get the shape. I'm gonna round out those corners just a hair because I don't want them to be 90 degrees. I want them to be slightly rounded. And then, so the whole composite first, and then I'm putting the lobes in. And this patient doesn't have deep lobes, very light lobes, but what she did have was deep striations. She had deep lines that go, were going across that composite. So I'm going back and forth, making those deep lines. The deep lines are in, most of the composite is done, and now I'm gonna finish. And I'm gonna take the medium spiral finisher first, 
and I'm going to very lightly go over the surface of this composite with it. If I wanted to reduce the lobes or reduce the striations, make that surface texture look less rugged and less deep, I would go over with this medium polisher a few more times. So this is how we decide how deep or not deep we want that enamel um, surface texture to be. But basically it is just a few passes. And you see it's starting to shine up and that's it. A few passes and then across the incisal edge. Just kind of rounding that out a bit. See how you can kind of see the lobes coming? You sort of see the striations. Switch it out. This is the white, this is the fine polisher. Same situation. And you can use this as much as you want to get it as shiny as you want. And you can really see the shine starting to come through there. And sorry for my focus, but you see the striations happening there too. You see, we're getting that same thing that she has on her other two. And I'm gonna just polish this as much as I want and blend it in. These you have to spin really slowly. These get spun at about 8,000 RPM. So this is a slow, light polish. And then there's the finished product. So you can see that it has the corners and it has the striation. And look how nicely it matches her other teeth. Whole restoration done in about 30 minutes. I think that might be it. So before and after. You see how she's a little whiter on her number eight um, and a little bit, all the rest of her teeth are the same color. Um, and sometimes, like when I look at this case and for so long we were all concerned about that black triangle between eight and nine, right? And um, that was there before she had her fracture and it's there after she had her fracture. I absolutely am not offended by those black triangles at all. I never point them out to patients and I always, um, it's, it's really healthier for the teeth if we don't overbuild composite in those areas. Okay. I, I have to say, I am so impressed. Wow. I mean, that's, uh, that, I mean, it's just, it's so easy how you just kind of went through that. And I love that. And um, yeah, got a bunch of people here just saying it's so good. And guys, if, if you like, if you like what Dr. McMahon just showed you guys, right, just type in, type in the comments section later, uh, Let's let's do let's do Susan. Let's make it easy. Put, put type in there, Susan. Show her some love here, uh, and um, we're going to talk a little bit later as she goes through this case about um, how can you see more, hear more from her, and learn more from her. We'll we'll go into that. And but let's you got this another another case here for us. All right, this is a bonus for us here. This is like a bonus case. This is a um, direct veneer case. Okay. And um, I, and um, we can just sort of zip through this because I use the same finishing technique. But what I love about this finishing technique is you can get seriously beautiful restorations in six minutes of finishing and anybody can do it. Like it doesn't take um, a special skill to do it, right? You just kind of have to follow the steps and know anatomy and get it done. And the, this, is, um, this is a direct veneer case too. And I know that, um, that maybe Seagal's gonna come on and talk to you a little bit more about you veneer another time, right? Um, but I love this product so much and I teach this all the time and so many dentists enjoy it. I just wanted to show the students what is really possible for them in, in a really short amount of time. Like they can come out of school and practice beautiful cosmetic dentistry kind of right out of the gate with things like this. So um, this is a 23 year old girl who really like doesn't have beautiful teeth. She's a beautiful smile, but she does not like her teeth. She thinks that it's not enough. She thinks her central incisors are uneven. She doesn't think they're showy enough. And um, she's really common. I see people like this all the time, um, that younger people are seeking out more cosmetic dentistry. And there's actually a phenomenon called Snapchat dysmorphia that we've been talking a lot about. Um, I know it's funny, but um, basically, you know, younger people, teenagers, young adults, they've spent, um, they've grown up in the whole culture of social media and they post about themselves all the time. And they're posting pictures of themselves and they're also comparing themselves, compare and despair to other people out on social media. And like celebrities that have beautiful, perfect teeth and what, what what used to be considered a beautiful smile isn't the norm anymore. Like the standard of beauty's kind of changed. So people want to have more idealized things. And for me, that is all about, like, I think it's really important that we address their needs, that we listen to them because 
many times they've been to other dentists and they've heard, no, your teeth are fine. No, you look great. I wouldn't do anything, but it's important to them. So I want to address that and I want to make sure I do something. So maybe they don't keep going until they find somebody. Cause she came to me and said, I, I want six veneers. Um, and I don't want to cut, I don't want to cut her teeth. I don't want to put deep cut veneers on a teeth like on this. Um, so I want to do something super conservative, but I want it to be beautiful too. And um, so here she is closer and you can see, look at that beautiful surface anatomy on her teeth. Um, you can just, you know, now you know, you could take that coarse diamond and you could build that right in and polish it up with those other two polishers. And you could accomplish this with composite if you wanted to, but we just want to make a note of what her surface texture is so we can work toward that goal, right? So she's, she's got lateral incisors that are, yeah, they, they're beautiful, but she thinks that they're too, that, that her smile isn't showy enough and she doesn't like that unevenness. So I'm gonna use a product called Uveneer. And what this is, is a kit that has molds that are pre-shaped to um, do direct composite veneers with. And their second generation of this kit is the one I love because it has surface anatomy built into it. So what I'm gonna do is size up her teeth. I'm gonna take my mold kit and decide which one fits best on there. And I'm gonna zip through this cause you're gonna get this again with the founder and the um, developer of this product. And she's amazing. And um, I, I, I always love to hear her talk, Seagal. Um, so I know what size I'm gonna use and I'm gonna one tooth at a time, put composite veneer, direct composite veneers on her four anterior teeth to see if we can't get her the look she wants. So we isolate the teeth, we etch them, we put adhesive on, and then we cure the adhesive. And then we take our, sorry, we take our mold and smash that composite into it, really overbuild it a little bit. And then very scientifically take our mold and smoosh it onto the tooth, um, making sure there's no air bubbles on there. You take an explorer, you clear off the extra, the excess, and that's what it looks like when it comes off. So you see it already has beautiful surface texture built in there, but it does have a little excess around the edges. So we're gonna take our same finishing. We're gonna take that coarse diamond and get rid of the excess. And then we're gonna go through our polishing. And it's gonna look like that. You see, I've nicked the tissue just a little bit when I was finishing it. And then we're gonna go one tooth at a time till we have all four of those teeth done. And here she is after. So this is composite restorations direct composite veneers with U veneer on her lateral incisors and her central incisors. And this is her post-op appointment. You see how beautifully that tissue comes together. And then let's just look at her before and after. So it's subtle, right? But it is 100% reversible. It's 100% non-reduction um, in tooth. And she loves it. I made her centrals even. I brought her laterals out a little bit. I kept her canines the same. And then here, here's her smile. And you can just tell she, she loves it. Wow. What a, what a great result. What a service to, to the patient because, I mean, she was walking in and she was ready for you to cut on her teeth and, and do veneers. She was prepared for that. She came with that expectation. And what a service given her an opportunity to pick something that's a little bit less invasive that's going to make her happy. And that, hey, you know, she has the choice if she wants to do something, you know, you know, porcelain or whatnot down the line. I, I love that. Now, I want to make sure because uh, we had a, a question from the uh, the comments uh, and they're asking, was that the same exact protocol as far as polishing that you did with the other cases? It, it was the same exact protocol. Now on, on these Uveneer cases, the, the body of the tooth is already um, polished, if you will, yeah. because it's been up against the mold. So um, if I, and, and, the, and the surface texture in the Uveneer kit is um, sort of heavy. So it allows you to leave it heavy or to bring it back by polishing a little bit. So in her case, I, I brought it back a little bit. I took a little bit of the surface texture away in the exact same way. I took the discs on the line angles to get rid of the excess. I took a coarse diamond across the cervical line to get rid of the excess. And then I took my coarse diamond, spun low and dry across the entire surface of the tooth, flipped it, did a little bit of lines. And then I took my medium polisher and polished it out. And I polished it a decent amount to get rid of some of that surface texture. 
and then my fine polisher and polished it out. So these people that have composite restorations like this, sometimes over time, and it'll probably take three years, you'll start to see a little bit of the sheen go away. But when they come in for their cleaning appointments, we just take that fine polisher and disc them right up again. It brings them right back to where they were. Oh, and they're I good. That. That, that's a great tip. That's a great tip that I'm actually going to make sure I implement in my practice there. Well, I'll say this, uh, guys, if you enjoy what you saw here, um, type in the comment section, Susan, show her some love there. And uh, Susan, First of all, I want to say thank you so much for sharing your knowledge here. Uh, we appreciate it. Like I said, these students came to me. They were like wondering where they can get some training. I said, well, let me talk to my friends over at Ultradent. And, and lo and behold, Melanie came through and introduced us here. Uh, you know, for those who, are, who watch this and they want to they attend some lectures uh, that you're going to put on and learn a little bit more from you, what's the best way to kind of follow you? Uh, obviously, we, you, you're part of the group. You guys can always message her. But, you know, is there, I know you mentioned Catapult. Is that where they would go to see, like, uh, upcoming schedule and whatnot? I know things are a little bit different now, right? Hopefully, we can start traveling a little bit. But eventually, things will get back to normal. What's the best way for uh, some of these uh, new grads and also some of these dentists who've been watching to kind of listen to you uh, speak again? Um, you could go to catapulteducation.com and my schedule is always on there. And um, like you said, we're, we're, I, I have maybe two lectures scheduled the whole rest of the year. Everything else has been postponed. But next year we're gearing up again and we're doing a lot of things like this. I'm on, um, I'm on live and on uh, Zoom meetings. I have a number of these coming up. I'll be at the midwinter next year and I'll be talking specifically about um, conservative cosmetics for younger people. And that's my favorite meeting of the year, the Chicago midwinter meeting. So I'm going to do a whole day of this. So come and see me. I'd love to see all of you. I love it. Yes. And, and, you know, go up to her and tell her that you saw this video. I mean, pe people who come on and done, and done these little, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Facebook lives, they love it when people come on and they say, Oh yeah, we saw you on there. So yeah, catapult education. I'll put all the links in there as well. And, you know, uh, Look, Susan's a wealth of knowledge. She's pretty much seen everything. And literally, we can now say that now, now that you've gone through this quarantine, you literally have seen everything in the industry. So, um, so you know, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, if you guys reach out to me, let me know. I'll reach out to her. We'll bring her on. We can talk, we can talk more about practice management and whatnot. She's in the faith for service space now. And I'll tell you what, Susan, with all this PPE, all this stuff, Man, you know, and wondering if insurance is going to cover it and whatnot. I mean, that's a whole topic right there. But I want to say this, Susan, thank you so much for jumping on and, and spending your time and and really sharing your time. And I will connect with you later to get the, kind of like that shopping list of uh, stuff that you use when we put there. But uh, Susan, again, thank you so much. Before we jump off, I always like to have my guests have the, the last word and, um, and I'll let you have the same there. So what's your message to uh, these dentists who are stuck at home uh, watching this? Right? I'm sure they'd rather be seeing patients, but uh, the message for them, but also these new grads who just came out and now they're faced with this. What, what's, what's your message to them? My message is the future is bright. So in the last six weeks, I have done probably 15 Zoom consults for cosmetics. So people are still calling, they still want it to be done, get good at it and you will, your practice will thrive. But we're gonna be fine in dentistry. I just feel great about everything. My staff is excited to go back to work and um, I've used this time to kind of like hone my skills in some things. And um, it's been a nice little break, but it's it's time to go back and yeah. it's going to be great well susan thank you so much and guys if you haven't noticed she's very optimistic that's why i love having her on here and that's such a great message uh we'll get through it we've been through we've been through some crazy stuff in dentistry we're going to get through this and uh again susan thank you so much for jumping on and guys thank you so much for tuning in this is a series i'm going to do uh, every friday we're going to have different clinicians on to share some pearls and whatnot and we'll just keep doing it until you guys told me to stop. Okay. So anyways, thanks for tuning in. We'll see y'all later. Okay, bye now.